I'm not typically one to rush the seasons, but I decided to decorate my home for spring a little bit early this year before baby comes. I just wanted everything to be fresh and pretty as we start this new season together. If you've been around here a while, you might know that most of the items in my home are secondhand. Whether that's furniture or decor, most of it has come from a thrift shop, an antique shop, or been passed down from family or even handmade. Today I'll be adding some spring touches to my home using thrifted items. I'll be sharing some of my top thrifting tips for decorating your own home and shopping thrift stores. And I'll be sharing a pretty but simple little spring DIY project. I hope you'll join me. My biggest tip for decorating with thrifted items would be to think outside the box. Even if you have something specific in mind when you go shopping, be willing to consider other options and even to rethink what constitutes decor. Decorating for the seasons does not just mean decorating with bunnies at Easter time or Santas at Christmas time. Those are fine, but consider decorating more with the colors and the textures of the season. That might mean using some thrifted plates on your wall or some quilts and baskets. It's really the colors and the textures that make it feel like that particular season. When considering objects for my home, I also like to ask myself, what cannot be changed about this object? If I like the basic object and the bones of it are good, meaning the quality and the structure, I then ask myself, can I change things about it, like the color or the fabric, to make it into something that I love? Also considering, is it worth my time and effort to do this project? Or would it be better for me to wait and find something else? That brings me to another important thrift tip. Just because it's at the thrift store does not necessarily mean it's a good deal or that you should get it. Even inexpensive thrifted items need a place and a purpose in your home. And if it's something that's going to turn into a project, you need to ask yourself, Am I realistically going to have the time and the energy to do this project? And are there any hidden costs that are going to make this not an economical option for me? Would it be better for me just to buy this item new or wait for a better item to come along? I love to change out this gallery wall seasonally with botanical prints, and I just store the extra prints in the back of the frame so that I don't have to store them elsewhere. You can find these and my other original botanical prints available as digital downloads in my Etsy shop, which I have linked below. When I'm decorating for a new season, I first clear everything away so that it's a blank slate, and then I bring in the items that I know I definitely want to use, like this really neat thrifted basket I found. I love the details on it, and I knew that I wanted to use it on my entryway table. The 
This little vintage bag, I think it may be a camera bag, is an example of thinking outside the box. I decided to hang it on a peg above my entryway table and fill it with some spring flowers. I wanted to do a little spring DIY project without spending any money, so I looked around in my basement and I found this coconut doormat that I had rolled up and I decided to paint it for springtime. I first traced a large circle onto the center using a white chalk marker. You could also use a white sharpie or something similar. And I then went over it with a very stiff paintbrush and some white acrylic paint making sure to really get the paint down into the fibers. I know what I said about bunnies before, but I thought it would be fun to add a bunny to the doormat. So I found this outline of a bunny online, printed it out, and then just traced around it with the white acrylic paint and filled it all in with a solid white. I then went around the circle and just freehand painted some leaves, some flowers, and some curly cues all the way around the circle. To protect the paint, I sprayed the whole mat with this clear Flex Seal spray that I already had. And when it dries, it remains flexible. And you'll never know it's there, but it helps protect your design. I really wanted to purchase a green and white mat to go under this doormat, but seeing as I wanted to keep this a no cost project, I decided to use the black and white one that I already had. It's a little more stark than I would like, but it still works and is definitely the more economical option. Being thrifty isn't just about shopping at the thrift stores. Sometimes it's about learning to be content with what you already have like pulling out my trusty door basket from last year and it looks exactly the same as it did last year but it's still lovely and there's absolutely no reason that i can't use it again to help keep it from sliding around too much on the door i just tied a little rubber band to the back which helps it be a little more grippy As I was decorating my kitchen for spring, I decided it was about time to polish up this beautiful English copper kettle that my sweet parents gave me a few years ago for Christmas. All I did was dip some lemon halves in some salt and buff it over the whole thing and it worked quite well. It's not perfect, but it's looking a whole lot better and a toothbrush dipped in some lemon juice and salt helped to reach those hard to reach places.
I'll also let you in on a little decorating secret. I keep my neutral cabinet wreaths up all through the winter and even through springtime. I feel like they're neutral enough that they work just as well with my spring decor. I do take them down in the summer and fall just so they feel fresh the next year. When it comes to shopping at thrift stores, one piece of advice that I would offer is to try a number of different chains of thrift stores in a number of different locations if that's possible for you. I find that around me, certain stores like Goodwill are better for certain types of items, while other stores are better for other types of items. I also have my favorite locations around town. And this is largely governed by the populations that donate to those specific stores. And after a while, you get a feel of which stores and which locations tend to have the most items that interest you. Keeping a running list of items you would like to find for your home is also helpful so that when you visit the thrift store, you can be on the lookout for those items, all the while keeping an open mind to different possibilities. Visiting frequently, and also especially after long weekends where people have had time to clean out their basements and closets, generally yields more selection. I hope you found these tips helpful and that this video has given you inspiration to decorate with thrifted items around your home or even items that you already have. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more cottage living and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.